So we're going to go ahead and go to the app. Uh, what you're going to want to do to have the best experience is go ahead and go to Worlds. You're going to go to Create World. Then from there, you can be able to type in the genre that you want. Uh, there's fantasy, you know, uh, you know, realistic, whatever floats your boat. And then from there, you can be able to do a general description. When you get to the general description, it could be able to, it'll um, completely make a random one for you. You can be able to edit it and have that be able to fit what you want. Uh, for all of these right now that I'm choosing, I'm just doing a bunch of random uh, races just to make it a little bit quicker for me to be able to explain um, what's exactly going on. So you have a total of five different uh, things to be able to put in. You have info, races, classes, factions, and locations. So um, it's pretty self-explanatory what each of them are. And when you, you can actually be able to, when you get to this page, you can be able to review everything to be able to make sure it fits to what you're looking for. And there's also an NFSW section for people who are, who are wanting to use this, you know, application for that, um, for that field, I guess. <laughs> and then you can also be able to change the image, which I really like. They're all AI generated images. I just chose a random one here. So if anybody wants to play to your world, that's the image that they'll see when they try to boot up. Uh, you can be able to make them public or private, uh, whichever you prefer. So I wanted to show here on this one um, for it's a race. So, you know, you have all of this stuff that explains that it generated, but if you want to be able to make it custom, you can. So for here, I just decided to do something real simple. I said the Firebolg are, you know, giant bears that... Are, are fire elementals because why not so after i push that you're going to push save so it can be able to say what you put in so we can see what happens after we type this out so just give it one moment And then from there, you have these buttons that are blue. When you click the button, it allow, it tells the AI that, hey, I want to include this race. I want to include this faction. I want to include this location into the world that I am playing as I am developing a story. So if you look here at the bottom, there's Vigilance of the Empire. Those are the two factions. And you can be able to have the cities be able to be in either of the in a, as many factions as you want when you're creating the world. I'm not sure what I was attempting to do here. I think I was just trying to show uh, what I already had made comments on. <sighs> and then if you look, there's a third per person option. That will allow you to be able to play in third person or uh, first or third. So the first would be more of, um, you know, like you are going to the fire, you are putting out the fire. And then, but my favorite is being able to play with third person because that feels more like an actual story. And you do have to train the AI for the first couple of what I call post to be able to have um to be able to have uh, i wish those messages haven't been popping up but you could be able to use the third person to be able to do it like a narration of a story so when i was at the quick start i put in the name i put in the gender and then you could be able to explain more information about it so as you can see it's just put a bunch of stuff i really don't want there so what you can do is if you look on the third option on the left it's called retry so i will keep retrying until i get something i like uh there is an art section when you go to memory so the only there's only two options they have a 2d one and a 3d one uh both of them are garbage at this point but there's also, if you look at uh, Wyvern, there's Dragon. All of these are different settings. When you first 
play the AI generator for free. They use one called Griffin. So this is just giving me a bunch of stuff that I may end up looking at. I see a couple of things that I really like. I can be able to edit on the bottom where it says that. And I, oh, on here I'd accidentally pushed image, but when you put in C, that will generate an image for you, which does use a resource called scales, which can be purchasable on the shop. So what I'm trying to do here is use the format that I'm wanting. I'm wanting to do it in third person. So when I'm trying to do it in third person, I'm writing out a little bit of what I want. Normally, if this was my own campaign that I wasn't using as an example for the uh, for this tutorial, I might put a little bit more detail to make this seem a little bit more fluid in where I'm wanting. So we're going to be continuing to uh, wait for what I'm trying to type out. Oh, I'm sorry for the wait on this. So I say that Myleth would run quickly in the woods to reach their destination to scout out the bandits for their contracts. I was trying to struggle up for a word on the end just to try to get the thing to generate. So there's different options here. So you're going to see temperature. That affects the randomness of the AI for it to stay consecutively or just throw something completely random in there. You can also be able to uh, do a response limit on how many words you want in. Uh, these other ones, I'm still trying to understand what they do. Um, I do know that the count penalty will help to not have as many repetitive words. And then from there, again, you're going to go back to the art. You can be able to give generation settings of what you're wanting for the um, image quality. And here you can be able to change the format of how the type of words, the colors. And then this is my favorite part when there's three different levels. So you have a not safe for work version. The moderate is more like a PG-13. And if you just want like a G-rated adventure, you just too strict. And uh, if you do the flag in FSW, people are not going to be able to read your stuff. Um, it's the same thing for publish. If you want people to read your things, you can be able to, um, you can be able to publish it and people can be able to search it up. Um, there is a tag section at the top as I was going really quick here, but you can be able to put in the tags for people to be able to read your story. So for for the thing that we're looking at here, more than likely, it's just going to be fantasy and then bull because that's what we got going on. So again, we're going back here. So during the memory section, which is, I believe, the fourth or fifth on the right, you could be able to edit this stuff anytime. So when you're playing, you could be able to, if a new character comes in, you could be able to add that character. So if you look here on the so you have active info, races, classes, factions. So when you go, there is a character option that you can be able to add these characters. And if you look on the other, you can actually be able to add items or books or whatever. That's nothing that doesn't fit into any of those categories. So from here, I'm trying to show that you could be able to generate um, random NPCs, factions, locations, just like we did in the first location. But the neat thing, but something you do have to keep in mind when you are creating a character, the third option for background is only open the first time when you are creating these things. So here, from here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new character to be able to explain what I'm talking about. So we're going to name this character Bob. Uh, he is a round fat man. So then if you want a background, I, from he, uh, for the background, I wrote why he's a big round fat man. It says here his mom was abusive, which led him to, to use food for comfort, which the AI 
will put into consideration when it is interacting with you with that character. And the magical thing about this is, is that you're not just stuck to one player. If you want to control, you know, Bob, if you want to be able to control any of the other things, you can. It's not like it's role play. Like role play, you can only control yourself because you're interacting with another person. With this, this entire world, just like, you know, creating a story, you can be able to edit it and have it go the way you want. Which, if you're wanting to write a book, because of the randomness, I believe it's really, really going to be able to help people. Uh, this is the future of writing, of storytelling, uh, because it gives you ideas that I never would have thought of when I'm writing. And I said here, <laughs> for the tags, I put like furry, uh, anime, and then the interesting thing is then when you fill in these tags... Whatever, um, whatever type of subject that you put in, it will actually word their responses based on that genre. So, you know, if you want a furry adventure full of paws and whatever, it's going to use those terms. And if you don't want any of that, then you can change those terms. Because if you try to use the furry stuff you're not going to be able to get a specialized response versus if you use a normal one so for here i'm trying to show uh like i said when you first start this stuff up it's going to be really really rough so we're having him um so we're having him you know having these things that he must protect okay you know the ai is acting kind of goofy here so i just decide to paraphrase Everything that's in what they just told me, <coughs> just to get the ball rolling. So it said here that the bull, the bull was named Mylath. He worked for the emperor, and in his contract it said he must protect the weak, protect the innocent and the good. So I kind of tried to round it up into one thing so it was more cohesive. For the story and for the AI to understand that it shouldn't be listing all of these things at once. So we'll just sit here and wait for this to uh, be typed out. And I will tell you, like I said, this thing can write almost any subject you want. Um, like I said, for the, you know, for the unstrict section, you know, if you're wanting to, you struggle to write that kind of stuff, I will tell you that it will help out in that category. Uh, because that's something I really struggle with uh, just due to, um, I am on the asexual spectrum. Um, but if, if your story is needing that type of stuff, it can help you write it. And then from here, it continues the type of, um, it continues the type of writing that I'm wanting. It's just describing his, uh, his description of what he looks like, um, you know, more information about him. And it, it helps out with descriptions. Now, if you're wanting to add another character, you're going to have to manually type it. Like I said, this person was named Janess. I just pulled that out of my ass when I was writing this stuff. So I said, Janess's companion for years was in the company as well. She was a fairy dragon. And then from there, when I hit the send button for it to continue generating a story, it's going to completely explain this fairy dragon based on one name. But I hope this helps people out. And as I showed you, you can be able to edit this information after it's already been sent. And um, but I, I've, if you use it the right way, instead of just doing it out the gate while it uses it, because when I first look at this, when I first looked at this product without actually playing around with it, I was like, eh, I didn't really know what to do, to do with it. But um the more entertaining thing about this is, is that if you look here, I am showing all the stories. I have one with, you know, 616 turns. 
So I can go back to that anytime. If I want to start a new story, it'll show it in that list. And on here, I'm trying to show how to delete an adventure, but <coughs> for the time span of this video, I, I could not figure it out. Anyways, I hope this helps uh, to be able to make your experience more, um, more better, uh, you know, have a better experience. Um, I, I absolutely love this app and it does take some time. If you're wanting to write a book with this, you're going to have to sit there for a couple hours, just hitting the retry, retry, retry until you get something that you want. But, um, just the stories that I'm already creating, like I showed you the one with 616 turns. Um, it has given me a lot of plot twist that I can be able to use later. But uh, anyways, have fun writing and um, let me know if you enjoyed this or not. I hope it was helpful.